Welcome to Karis Daily Live Bible Study. Join believers from around the globe to study the Bible with Andrew Womack and instructors from Karis Bible College. Hello, everyone. My name is Julianne Harris, and I want to welcome you to Karis Daily Live Bible Study. I'm going to be your hostess this morning, so let me jump right into the uh, announcements so we can get to the Bible study portion of the program. So we have live Bible study five days a week, and I want to go over the schedule with you so that you can tune in while we're live and interact with us. So on Mondays and Fridays, we have live Bible study at 10 a.m. On Tuesdays and Thursdays, it's at 6 p.m., and Wednesday morning is at 7 a.m., and that is all mountain time. So calculate that out from wherever you're tuning in and tune in while we're live so you can interact with us. How you can interact with us is as you listen to the teaching, you're gonna have questions come up in your heart and your mind. We want you to submit those questions in whatever forum you're watching, go down to the chat section, submit those questions. Then the last 10 to 15 minutes of the program, we'll get to as many of your questions as we possibly can. You can also interact with us by becoming a partner of this ministry. I say this every single time because it's true. You can be a part of all the lives that are being touched by this ministry simply by giving or becoming a partner. So go to awmi.net slash give or give us a call at 719-635-1111. And last but not least, um, we have prayer ministers available to you 24 hours a day, seven days a week. If you're going through something, there's no reason why you are going through it alone. We have prayer ministers who want to direct you towards the word of God. God, they will stand and pray in their authority and you will see miraculous things happen in your life. So give them a call at 719-635-1111. We also are being diligent this month to announce and remind you that we have uh, spring registration coming for Karis Bible College. You know, uh, Karis Bible College was founded by Andrew Womack and um, <clears throat> it's changing lives. I'm one of those lives that were changed and you can sign up in January. So we would encourage you to go and check that out at karisbiblecollege.org or give us a call once again at that same phone number 719-635-1111. We have some events coming up in December on December 6th, next week, Tuesday evening on Tuesday Night Live Bible Study. Andrew's going to be revealing his big vision. So you don't want to miss that. We also have Heart of Christmas, which is an amazing theatrical play that's coming up on December 11th, I believe 9th through the 11th. And then we also have a live nativity scene. They bring like donkeys and camels and it's pretty awesome. Are you going to be a part of the live nativity this I, year? I haven't Barry? been invited, no. Oh, <laughs> all right. Well, let me introduce <coughs> Barry Bennett, who is sharing this morning. I kind of put him on the on the spot right there. Uh, but he is literally my favorite instructor from Bible school. And so I know if you haven't heard Barry minister, you are going to be abundantly blessed. And if you have, you know you're going to be blessed. So uh, his official title for Karis Bible College is Senior Instructor. So Barry, welcome. We are ready for what you're bringing us Thank this you, morning. Thank you, Julianne. Yes. I was thinking, as you said, mountain time, and I thought, this is very accurate. We are in a, <laughs> on a mountain now. We literally are on yeah, a mountain. We, and, uh, <laughs> we have all kinds of weather issues with our mountains. <laughs> yes, Praise God. Do. So do. anyway, good morning. God bless you all. Hope you all are doing well. And uh, looking forward to sharing the word with you. And I have a word that uh, has blessed and helped me. So I like to share that which is good for me. Amen. And I uh, trust it will be good for you as well. And I want to talk about the power of doubt. Mm and uh, challenge us perhaps in this area because once I think we understand where doubt comes from, we can identify it and then we can begin to uh, move out of that ar arena and move over into the arena that produces faith. Amen. So I want to start with Mark 9.23, Mark 9.23. And Jesus is speaking and he says, and, and there's a story around this, but really it's the statement that concerns me here. If you can believe, all things are possible to him who believes. Mm. And this is so all-inclusive. This is such a huge promise. And many of us, uh, we know this promise. We perhaps have confessed this promise. We're aware of it. Uh, but how many of us are living it? And I think Jesus meant what he said. I'm pretty sure that Jesus meant what he said. <laughs> if you can believe, all things are possible to him who believes. But what are we talking about here? What kinds of things are possible? And is believing that important? Obviously, I think, yes, believing is very important because Julianne and I were just talking before we came on the air that 
if everything was automatic, all of the blessings of God were automatic, we would all be blessed on the same level all the time. And every time a need arose, it would go away because God would take care of it. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's not how life works. That's, exactly. None of us have lived with an automatic blessing level that's the same for everyone. And so Jesus is saying, if you can believe, all things are possible to him who believes, meaning all things are not possible to the one who doesn't believe. Mm. And so is living in the love of God possible? Absolutely. Is living with the joy of the Lord continually possible? Yes. Amen. Is living with peace that passes understanding, is that possible? Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, living in, a, in health, is that possible? Yes, it is. It's not only possible, it's the will of God. Living with your needs met and above and beyond, pressed down, shaken together, running over. Now I'm starting to get into where maybe some of you are doubting. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, that's possible. It's God's will. And we can go on down the list of all kinds of things that have been provided by the grace of God through the, the finished work of the cross. But so few Christians are taking advantage. Uh, they're not believing. And so that's where this doubt issue comes in. And that's what I want to talk about with you. What are we believing? What are we doubting? Where does belief come from? Where does doubt come from? All right. So I, I'm going to cut to the chase real quick here and then develop it as we go. But this helped me so much when I finally realized this, that doubt is carnal. Doubt is carnal. When I say carnal, I don't mean lustful necessarily. What I mean is doubt is not of the spirit world. Doubt is of the natural world. Doubt is of the five senses. Doubt is part of your memory, part of your logic as you evaluate the circumstances around you, as you remember how things went before uh, in that kind of situation. In other words, doubt is memory-based. Doubt is sensory based, you see, you hear, uh, you have emotions, all of those kinds of things are where doubt will come from. And so we have to understand that if doubt is carnal, faith is spiritual. And this, to me, just that, that statement right there has helped me so much because I realized that my faith, if I can believe all things are possible, if I can believe, but this belief isn't just my mental ascent that comes and goes because my mental ascent can be challenged by circumstances. My mental ascent, what I agree with, my belief system can be challenged by my emotions. Mm. My, what I agree with doctrinally can be challenged by a doctor's report. What I agree with doctrinally can be challenged by my bank account. So I can have good doctrine. I can mentally be, yes, this is, this is what God wants. But am I believing it with my heart or has the sensory realm of circumstances, words, emotions, memories, has that become the, the, the source of my, where I live, doubt. Mm. And so this is, this is what I want to talk with you all about. Doubt is just simply living from your five senses. We all have senses. I'm not saying we, we can escape that. But are your five senses going to be the source of your life? Is the news the source of your life? Mm. Your emotions, your memories of past relationships or circumstances, is that where you're drawing from? Or are you drawing from the Word of God? Okay. So I want to I want to read a story here, very well known, Matthew 14. And this is of Peter walking on the water. And I, you're going to say, I, are, I know that story, and I do too, but let's, let's read it anyway. Maybe we'll see something new here. <laughs> In Matthew 14, 25 through 31. It says, now in the fourth watch of the night, and Jesus had been praying, and he sent the disciples over the lake on a, in a boat, and then all of a sudden he shows up walking on the water. So now in the fourth watch of the night, Jesus went to them walking on the sea. And when the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were troubled, saying, it is a ghost. And they cried out for fear. But immediately Jesus spoke to them, saying, be of good cheer. That cracks me up. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just walking on the water. Be of good cheer. It is I. Do not be afraid. And Peter answered him and said, Lord, if it is you, uh, command me to come to you on the water. So he said, come. And when Peter had come down out of the boat, so he had to climb over the side of the boat, he walked on the water to go to Jesus. 
So Peter is in a place of faith and he's walking on the water. This is incredible. Yeah, amen. But Jesus said, come, and, and Peter had that, that personality. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to test this thing out. And he was walking because Jesus said, come. All right, so we, we're probably familiar with this. But it goes on, uh, verse 30. In verse 30, it says, but when he saw, underline that, if you have a Bible or highlight it or whatever. When he saw that the wind was boisterous, he was afraid. Those two words go together. And, be, and beginning to sink, he cried out and said, Lord, save me. And immediately Jesus stretched out his hand and caught him and said to him, Oh, you of little faith, why did you doubt? Now, this, there's, there's a lot happening here. When Peter's walking on the water toward Jesus, he, he's doing well. And it's not that... I'm sure he wasn't all of a sudden thinking, oh, this would be easy if there wasn't a storm, but there's a storm, so this has gotten hard. Now, you don't, you don't walk on the water even when there's no storm. Amen. Unless you have a word from God, and he's walking on the water, but then it says he saw. He went to his sensory evaluator, wow. his vision. He saw the wind and the waves boisterous, and it says, and he was afraid. Now, here's, my, here's the point I want to make. He went from faith to doubt instantly. The minute he switched over from walking on what Jesus said to him, come, and the minute he looked at the circumstances, his faith disappeared. Wow. He started in faith, he ended underwater or in the water. Mm -hmm. And that happened, that didn't take days of meditating on storms for that to happen. It took him one second. Wow to notice the wind and the waves. And immediately the faith that was sustaining him over the water was gone that fast. And, I, and as I see this, I look at this and I thought, I've, I've done this. Mm -hmm. Probably you've done this. That we get into a place of faith for a few moments until somebody says something until we turn on the TV, until we look at our bank account, until we, we get a doctor's report, and then pff, faith can be gone instantly wow. because we have switched that uh, stimuli, stimulus that we are paying attention to from the Word of God to the circumstances, to the senses, to the words of others, right. to the emotions, to the memories of the past. We are, we are vacillating. I'll speak for myself. I have vacillated between the Word of God and all the things I just mentioned. And when you vacillate, when you, when you believe you're in a place of faith and then you all of a sudden, but what about this? Mm. Then faith can disappear in an instant. Mm. You can be walking on the water one instant and be soaking wet the next. This, this, is, this was powerful for me as I began to develop this in my own spirit, in my own heart, trying to understand why have I had victories sometimes that are amazing <clears throat> And other times I didn't have the same victory or I didn't have it at the same speed. And I have to be honest and say, well, I was allowing varying stimuli to impact me. I would be in the Word and then I would, okay, but what about this? And I would go back and forth in the Word, but what about this? But what about that? But they said this, but this is what happened last time. And when you go back and forth between that which is natural and that which is spiritual, Apparently, the natural is going to win. It did in Peter's case yeah. because he took his eyes off the spiritual. He took his eyes off the word. The word in this case was Jesus' word, come. Mm. He didn't say that to everybody. He said it to Peter because Peter asked. If it's you, he challenged him. If it's you, tell me to come. So he had a word from Jesus Amen. for him in that moment. That word would have sustained him all the way to Jesus, and then they could have walked back together and climbed in the boat. Uh, cool story there. But he took his eyes off the word, or he allowed his eyes, his sensory eyes, to look around at the circumstances. This is impossible. How can I be on the water? This is, there's a storm. As if if there wasn't a storm, there would be no problem. But <laughs> there's a storm. Uh, and so, but, that, but the point being, that which is natural or slash carnal took dominance over that which was spiritual and was still alive if he wanted it. Yeah. Wow. All things are possible to him who believes, but the moment he stopped believing, he went down. 
Now, I don't know if this is impacting you the way it, it, it still is working in my heart. Still, uh, I'm still getting instruction from this. So I'm, I'm wanting to say, okay, then I need to be very careful with what I allow myself to feed on. Now, I know I talk about this a lot, and I'm going to talk about it again. Amen. Because what I feed on is what I'm going to resort to when I need something from God. What is it that's feeding me? What is it that excites me? What is it that I pursue? What is it that am I pursuing? And we can, we can go down a, a list of things. Am I pursuing the news? Do I have to know every detail about every horrible thing that's happening oh. in the world? Yeah. And, I, and every time a new headline comes out, all they're trying to do is suck you in to read their next article so they can have an advertisement in the middle of it or to watch the, the TV program so they can show you some other product. Mm -hmm. They know what they're doing. But what's it doing to you as you watch the news or as you enter into the political arena? And some people are called to that. They're graced for that. But do you need to know every single scandal? Do you need to know every single lie, every conspiracy theory, everything that's going on in Washington? Do you really need to know that? Is that feeding your faith mm. or is that creating fear and doubt and unbelief? Amen. This is, this is really important. So what you're feeding on, what excites you, where you spend the majority of your time is what is going to be there for you when you're challenged in your, in your walk. And what's, what's in there? And if you get challenged, if the doctor says, as, he, as I heard these very words, you need to get your affairs in order. Uh, I had a spiritual peace that superseded the, the disorientation that took place immediately. I couldn't believe what I was hearing. Uh, I thought I had no clue that I was even that sick. I knew something was wrong, but I didn't know I was that sick. Two days to live. Uh, all, I won't go through the list of everything that was wrong, but it was very critical. Uh, what am I going to do with that? Well, I had a spiritual reality in my life, a peace in my life. Yeah that allowed me to respond first with, well, okay, if I die, I die. That's okay. But the other part of that reality was I could hear God. I could hear God when the Spirit of God spoke to me uh, and said, you're not going to die from this. It, became, it was a seed of a word. It got bigger and bigger as time went on. I didn't even know, necessarily realize it right at that moment. I, I can't remember clearly, but I know that seed of God's word began to take root inside of me, and it overcame all of the other words I was getting. All the other words I was getting would have put me in a total place of doubt and unbelief. I'm going to die. Let's buy the burial plot. Mm. Uh, I could have gone that direction. But there, because I have fed myself so much on the Word of God, there was a foundation there. I had, a ch I had here's the choice I had to, I had. Am I going to, first of all, can I hear God? Is the, are the other voices far too loud for me? Uh, you're going to die, get ready, get stuff in order. Was that too loud? Would that overwhelm the Spirit of God? Praise God, it didn't, but for many people it does. Yeah. They hear those kinds of words and they get overwhelmed with the natural, just like Peter did. They take their eyes off what they should be looking at. And they get overwhelmed with the natural and down they go. Mm. I've seen this time after time. Where is your, what's, what's feeding your spirit? Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God, Matthew 4, 4. And so we need to be feeding on things that are going to sustain us. Let's go to Proverbs 4, 23. Praise God. Proverbs 4, 23. It says, keep your heart with all diligence, for out of it spring the issues of life. Mm -hmm. Keep your heart with all diligence. Well, what is feeding your heart? What are you keeping in your heart? There's a verse in, I don't have in my notes, but I'm, I'm going to mention it. Matthew 12, 35. I have it here on my iPad. Matthew 12, 35 says, A good man, out of the good treasure of his heart, brings forth good things. And an evil man, out of the evil treasure, brings forth evil things. And I have a whole book about this called Shaping Your Future. But in your heart, you are bringing forth your future. And there's a treasure there. It's either good or evil. And so my question is, how did it get to be good or evil? Did God make it good or evil? Where did it come from? No, the treasure is up to you. Mm. 
And what, what you're feeding on is the accumulation, or the, the, let me put it this way, the treasure is the accumulation of what you've been feeding on. Mm. Whatever excites you, whatever stimulates you, whatever you pursue, whatever you give your time to, the most of your time, I know there's life, but whatever really is, is feeding you, that's the treasure. And if the treasure is Hollywood, if the treasure is news, if the treasure is all of the latest scandals, if the treasure is how bitter you are against somebody in your family and unforgiveness, and if that's what's feeding you and that's what you meditate on day and night, that's your treasure. Mm -hmm. And faith isn't going to come from that. Faith is going to come from a good treasure. Faith is going to come from uh, the Word of God that's in you. And so all of us have a treasure. How's your treasure? What's going on there? Yeah. And in other words, doubt can snuff out instantly the faith that was carrying you to the victory. But if you look at the wind and the waves, or if you look at, if you, you're believing God for something, we'll talk, let's talk about healing. You're believing God for healing, but you're spending all of your time on WebMD, looking up all of your symptoms and all the side effects and all this, that, and the other, and how many people survive and how many don't survive. And, you're, and you become an encyclopedia of knowledge about what you think you have or oh. what they've told you you have. Is, can faith come from that? Or are you looking at the wind and the waves? Mm -hmm. And you could have been walking in faith up until the moment you decided to check this out. I need to read about this. And then all of a sudden, you can just sink like a rock. That's the power of doubt. That's why I call this lesson the power of doubt. Doubt has the power to, to cause you to lose every blessing that God has in store Amen. for you. Amen. Jesus said, all things are possible to him who believes. But that believing part there is, that's the key. And your heart can't believe if it's being fed unbelief. Mm-hmm. And the last time I checked, the news and all of the stuff on, in our world is unbelief. I mean, it's to the max. Uh, they are wanting to entice you into the world of unbelief. There are, I, see, I see headlines, and I, I can see the psychology behind these headlines. Is, uh, beware of this kind of food. Beware of this kind of vitamin. Beware of shopping in this store. Beware of these products. Beware of this. Beware of that. What is that? That's all fear. Yeah. They're putting fear into you that where you're, you're unsure about what to do. What vitamin can I eat? What food can I eat? What should I, I, I just need to stop eating, okay? <laughs> I need to stop shopping. I can't do anything. That's fear, but that's, that's a psychological tool of the enemy to keep you in a place of instability, never knowing what you can do, never having peace, never having joy, always questioning, always looking things up. Is this safe? Is that safe? Instead of feeding on God's word. God's word is, it says in John 6, 63, my words are spirit and life. Amen. My word, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word, I'm going to combine the two, every word which is spirit and life that proceed from the mouth of God. Where does faith come from? Romans 10, 17 says faith comes by hearing. hearing, not just this hearing, because a lot of people hear and don't have any faith. But faith comes by spiritual hearing of the Word of God. Amen. If that's what you're feeding on, then that's going to be the treasure that you can draw from when you need it. But if, that's, if you're not feeding on the things of God that is spirit and life, then you must be feeding on something else. We're all feeding on something. Let's be honest. Mm. We're all, I, t I tell this to people all the time. We're all meditating on something. Yeah, we I are. say, tell, teach me how to meditate biblically. You're already doing it. Yeah. You know, you're thinking about something day and night. Yeah. And so whether it's the things of God or the things of the world, uh, we're all doing it. And so it's just a matter of choosing what you're going to meditate on. And we could, it's the same thing with, with uh, what you're hearing. What are you hearing? And I've said this a number of times lately that I, I am very diligent now to listen to at least two hours of teaching a day, an hour driving up, an hour driving back. That's awesome. And then on the weekends, this past weekend, I got up, I listened to at least an hour and a half uh, of teaching from one teacher, and then I turned on and watched uh, my church mess meeting, and I got fed there. And, and uh, I'm trying to be very diligent in keeping my spirit in tune with faith-building, life-giving words. Amen. 
Why? Because I got really close to not being here and now I see, okay, just because I'm a Bible teacher doesn't mean I'm feeding on the Word. Uh, now I had enough in me to, to, to make it through that, that uh, challenge. But I don't want to get to that place again. Amen. I don't want to get to that challenge again. All things are possible to him who believes. But doubt can in an instant snuff out your faith. It did for Peter. It snuffed it out. He was walking on the water. And then he took his eyes, or we could say his heart, off of what Jesus had said and who Jesus was standing in front of him. And he began to look at the circumstances. And instantly that which was miraculous was gone. Mm. And I know a lot of people, their miraculous healing, they're, they're walking in it, it's progressing, it's coming to fruition. And, and then all of a sudden they start reading all the doctor's reports or start listening to their body. And in an instant, their faith is gone. So true. This, this, is, this is so uh, important in our lives. How do, how do we feed on them? Well, you feed, you read. You read the Word of God. Listen to people teaching the Word of God. Pray in the Spirit. Pray in English. If you're not praying in the Spirit yet, you should. Go to Luke 11, 13, believe it and receive. I'm not going to teach that right now. <laughs> but you need to be praying in the Spirit. Somebody said, I like this. I saw this the other day, that praying in the Spirit is like uh, charging a rechargeable battery. Amen. Where you, you plug it in and it, it, these, there are certain batteries that can be recharged. That's what's happening to you when you pray in the Spirit. Amen. So, so vital. That's a, that's a good way to have a foundation for faith and not yes. be moved by the circumstances. In James 4.8, James 4.8, the last part of the verse, it says, purify your hearts, you double-minded. Mm -hmm. I've taught, I've, many of these things I've taught before, many of you have heard me, but these are so important. Yeah. That what goes on in your head begins in your heart. Purify your heart, you double-minded. What's, the, what's the, the antidote for double-mindedness? A pure heart. So if you're struggling with what you think about and struggling with what you feed on and struggling with all this stuff, it's a heart issue. Mm -hmm. It's a heart issue. So be honest. I mean, there's, God knows, so don't, you can't hide it. Amen. <laughs> okay? <laughs> it cracks me up when people try to keep secrets from God. Uh, He's, <laughs> he knows what you're going through, so talk to Him about it. Amen. Be honest with what's going on in your life and Amen. so that you can be cleansed. So purify your heart, your double-minded, or what's, decide what you're going to feed on. That's how you purify your heart. That's good. It's, and I've said this before. I'm saying everything again. That's good. It's all right. Oh, we need to hear if you have a glass, let's see if I have a mug of dirty water. Thankfully, this is clean. Uh, <laughs> but if it were dirty... Uh, the way to cleanse it is to put it under a faucet of clean water and let the faucet just fill it Amen. to overflowing. The dirty water will eventually all be gone and it will be filled with clean water. Same way with your life. Same way with your heart. Praise God. Let your heart get filled with God. Is that what, make, is that what excites you? Uh, you can live a me mediocre life. A lot of Christians do. God still loves you. But if you want to go back to the promise that, that Jesus gave us, all things are possible to him who believes. If you want that to be your reality, you're going to have to fill your heart with clean water. The, the washing of the water by the word. It's, we're, you, you can live on a different level. Amen. You can see healing in your body. You can move into the prosperity of God. I know a lot of people will get offended or antsy about that. But there is an abundant life for you if you would believe. Amen. But what are you feeding on? Amen. So I'm going to go to uh, Mark 11, 23 and 24, mm -hmm. as if I could possibly teach this without going there. <laughs> so let's go to Mark 11, 23 and 24. And Jesus said, For assuredly, I say to you, whoever says to this mountain, be removed and be cast into the sea and does not doubt where? In his heart. Amen. Does not doubt in his heart, but believes that those things he says will be done. He will have whatever he says. So many people are waiting for God to do something. And God's done doing what God does. I mean, he, when Jesus said it is finished, it was finished. And everything has been given to you by grace. And it says, whosoever, whoever says to this mountain, that's me, that's you. We're whoever's. Amen. Amen. Be removed and be cast into the sea. Who's making this decision? Who's making this proclamation? Who has decided this 
challenge is not for me. Mm. I'm done with this. Be removed. They're not trying to climb the mountain. They're trying to remove the mountain. Amen? It's too many of us are trying to climb the mountain. Let's just speak to the mountain. Be removed and be cast into the sea and does not doubt in his heart. Now you may have a, excuse me, you may have a doubt in your head, but your heart is where doubt really takes place. In your heart, you are either going to be living from the spirit of God or you're going to be living from the natural realm of your soul and your senses and your emotions. That, the heart makes that choice. And so doubt is of the, of the natural realm. Faith is of the spiritual realm. Your heart, watch over your heart because from it flow the issues of life. Amen? Amen. And so it's, it's your heart. Purify your heart, you double-minded. The heart is where you're making your life choices. And from the heart is where you can either believe God and have all things are possible, or from the heart you can feed on the things of the world and you can lose out on everything God had for you. But it's whoever will believe and not doubt in the heart shall have whatever he says. God's not doing this. God has given you the power to do this. Amen. God has given you the, the power to speak to your body. I speak to my body. It doesn't always immediately respond, but I, I am growing in my faith because I'm feeding on God's word and I'm getting more adamant about some things in my body or things in my finances or things in my ministry or things in whatever. And it, we speak to things. Last night we had a, a uh, and today we're having a big windstorm. And when my wife got into bed last night, I could, she started talking. She says, I just command this wind to, to stop and be at peace. I mean, we speak to things. Amen. Uh, it's it's not, not crazy. It is what God has Amen. challenged us to do. He's waiting on us. So many people would say, well, I'm just waiting for the manifestation. Stop waiting. That is a trap. We don't wait for the manifestation. We proclaim, declare, and see the manifestation in the spirit. Uh, I was talking to someone recently dealing with a health issue, and well, I'm just waiting on the manifestation. I, I know what you're saying, but that is a passive trap. We need to begin to speak to our body. Do you believe that tomorrow you can be better than you are today, even if you, if you don't notice it with your senses? Do you believe tomorrow you're more healed than you are today? Don't struggle with that. Say yes. Believe it. Amen. And the next day, do you believe you'll be even incrementally better than you were today? Can you believe that? Say yes. All right. Don't doubt me right now. Amen. Say yes. <laughs> Can you believe that a week from now you'll be better? You may even be aware of it in your senses. See, you begin to take authority over these things and you begin to speak. You begin to declare, and what worked for me was I began to see myself healed in my spirit, man, and see my future and see my health. I'm not waiting for the manifestation. I'm working with God declaring the manifestation. Whether I can see it or not today, I know that tomorrow is better than today, and two days from now are better than today, and three days from now I'm going to be even better, and four days, and I don't care how long it takes. In my case, it took a year, but I'm here. I'm here because I chose not to doubt. Amen. Was I challenged? You betcha. I was challenged on the soul level. I was challenged on the emotional level. I was challenged physically. But the spirit, I, I could always go back to my spirit Amen. and know I am going to come through this. I am going to be well. Challenges, yes. Storms, yes. Am I going to look at what the doctor said or am I going to look at what the word says? And a lot of you are going through things like this uh, and... I'm trying to help you. Your doubt is natural. Faith is spiritual. Which one are you eating? Which one are you feeding on? Amen. I've kind of run out of time here. Uh, let me, let me, can I give you, let me give you one more, two more verses. Yes. Can I do that? Yes, absolutely. Right. Two more verses. Psalm 56, four. Psalm, where am I? Psalm 56, four. <laughs> <laughs> Changed the camera when I wasn't they looking. They switched it up on yeah. you. <laughs> All right. Psalm 56, four says, in God... I will praise his word. Ooh, that's good. There's a whole lot there. In God, I have put my trust. I will not fear. What can flesh do to me? Hey. I will not fear. What can flesh do to me? Amen. In God, I will trust. I will praise his word. 
I will not fear. Praise God. Let me do one more. Psalm 12, 6. See, doubt is really not trusting the Word of God. Yeah. That's the, the bottom line. We just don't trust the Word of God. We don't believe this could be true. Theologically, doctrinally, yeah, we get it. That's all neat. But in my case, and everybody has a case, mm. uh, you need to forget your case and get on to Jesus' case. Amen. He's Amen. got a better one. Praise God. Psalm 12, 6 says, The words of the Lord are pure words, like silver tried in a furnace of earth purified seven times. Mm. The words of the Lord are pure words. Th this is... This is the, the bottom line here. Who will you trust? Where is your trust? Is it in the Word of God or is it in your senses and in the news and in all the natural circumstances? Where is your trust? Because you can have whatever you say. All things are possible to him who believes. But are you experiencing it? Are you willing to trust the Word of God or are you going to continue to live by your senses? Faith is spiritual, doubt is natural. We have to choose. I'll stop there. Man, that's powerful. All right. Um, yes, wow. Uh, I have so many instances of Jesus in the moment, in the stories in the New Testament where it's proving what you say is true. It's like in those moments, he was like, uh, I'm thinking about the man that came because his daughter was dying. And he said, Jesus, will you come to my house? And then they get delayed by the woman with the issue of blood. Right. And then the servant comes and says, don't bother the master anymore. It's Your true. daughter's dead. Yeah. And in that moment, Jesus says, fear not, believe only. Yep. He was like, in that moment, he could have lost his miracle. Could have looked at the circumstances just yes. like Peter, and it would have been over. And it would have been over. Yeah. Oh, man, that's so good. Okay, so your questions are great. We're going to get to as many as we possibly can. So Samaya on chat says, how can I break the doubt that only became a stronghold after something I thought would succeed ended up failing every time I tried? Well, uh, everything I said. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> Go back. Watch. Don't, don't watch dwell on the again. past. I, you know, I don't dwell on the past. I've made mistakes in the past, but I can't live there and yeah. succeed in the future. Yeah. And so go to the Lord. Lord, why? ask him, why did this not work? And what do you want me to do? And show me the steps. Get, get wisdom from God. He gives wisdom. Amen. Uh, be quickened by the Holy Spirit. So I would say don't keep worrying about why something failed. Uh, I'm not suggesting you're worrying, but uh, you need to look to the future, not to the past. And hear from God. God is wanting to walk and talk with you and show you what to do and how to do it. And so uh, go back, listen to this again. I think it'll, you'll probably get more out of it the second time. Yeah, amen. I'm, I'm definitely going to go back and watch it again. It's so great. Uh, so Reve on YouTube says, is being afraid or of falling or not getting what I desire an indication of doubt? Or is it just that I'm looking at the reality? Well, you're looking at the reality with, and you're getting filled with doubt because of that. Mm. In reality, everything in this world is temporal. Amen. Everything is subject to change. Uh, your body is subject to change. Your bank account is subject to change. Uh, the country obviously is subject to change. Everything going on in our country. Everything is temporal. And so when we try to build our futures or build our lives on that which is shifting, that which is changing, uh, we're going to be part of that environment. But when you build your life on that which is eternal, the Word of God, the promises of God, it doesn't matter what happens in this world. God is my source. That is so real to me. God is my source. Therefore, all the things that are going on in the world, I still have a source that is abundantly more than I can ask or think. I'm convinced of that. Are you convinced of that? And so fear is going to be looking at the natural and evaluating it and deciding, well, I guess that's my reality. No, change your reality and get into the Word of God, get into the promises of God and begin to soak yourself, feed yourself on that and let it become your new reality. And the perfect love of God drives out fear. I mean, walking and talking with God should eliminate fear from your life. Amen. Praise God. Uh, so Josiah on chat says, if the rest of your family are feeding on worldly things, how do you relate to them? I'm practically talking about TV programs. Uh, you know, don't judge, don't condemn. Just keep sowing the seeds of what's going on in your life. Have a testimony. Be full of joy. Be full of peace. Let them see you in the word. Uh, don't, be, don't be negative toward them. Be positive in your relationship with God. You're sowing seeds, and sooner or later, uh, 
what they're feeding on is going to have consequences, and they're going to come to you and say, tell me how you live. Tell me how this is working for you. I want, it, I want what you have. Uh, being a witness isn't just telling people you need to repent and believe in God. Being a witness is demonstrating the goodness of God in your life to those around you. And so we just need to be living out what we say we believe and let those seeds find places and different ones will come to you at different times uh, and they will ask questions. I remember I used to work in commercial construction years ago back in the 80s mm -hmm. and I worked with some pretty rough and tough guys, bikers and what have you, all kinds of, you know, anyway, tough, tough people. <laughs> and they knew I, they would call me preacher boy and they'd make fun <laughs> of me, hey preacher boy. And so, so they would, there was a little persecution going on there. I didn't, I don't care. But in a group, they would do that. You know, during break time, they would make jokes and try to make me blush and all this kind of stuff. Uh, but then when I would be working with one of them alone, they would break down. And this one guy that was really rough, really rough character had been a Baptist pastor. Oh, no way. And had fallen away and was totally miserable in his life. But with the group, he was totally against me. But when we worked alone together, he, wanted, he started asking me questions Amen. and I was able to minister to him. I'm being a witness. Amen. 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 So Amen. Uh, we, in our environment, whatever environment you, you are in, be an expression of God's goodness and God's love. And those are seeds that will have impact. Man, that's so good, so good. Uh, so Michelle on Facebook has a question, and I think it would help clarify in her mind. Uh, she says, so could we have doubt in our head, but faith in our heart? Could the two be disconnected? You can. I mean, obviously you can have thoughts that are, that are fleeting, I'll say. Mm. Once you give place to them, though, once you begin to think about what's in your head more than what's in your heart, it's going to take over what's in your heart. It's going gonna, it's gonna to snuff it out. That's what happened to Peter, and it happened very, very quickly. And so his, his doubt came the moment he looked at the wind and the waves. And so it can be in your head. If it's a fleeting and you push it out, you take every thought captive, you'll be okay. But if you allow it to, to take root, uh, it can snuff out your faith pretty quickly. Okay, that's awesome. Um, Adam on Facebook has a great question. He says, whenever you feel low spiritually and you intend to get your spirit like built up again, which would you prescribe, praying or studying the word? Yes. <laughs> I knew that was gonna be his answer. I thought it was gonna be both. Uh, yes, 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 yes and yes. <laughs> I mean, I pray while I study the word. I'm, oh, I'm praying in the yes. spirit while I'm reading. I pray in the spirit while I'm while I'm driving, listening to someone else teach, I'm even yes. praying in the spirit then. It's so good. And so I, I do it all. And uh, I want everything God has for me and I'm, I'm dedicated to that. Amen. Yeah. Uh, Olga on YouTube, she is curious what teachers you listen to. Good ones. <laughs> nice. I, I listen, I, you know, I hate to do that because there's always going to be yeah. someone that I, I don't agree uh, with every jot and tittle, every little thing they may say. What I'm getting from teachers is the impartation. Like there's one very famous man of God that I get, Im what impart he imparts to me is his freedom. The freedom he has to enjoy God and just enjoy God on every level. I, that imparts something to me. There's another one I listen to, the way he just takes the word apart and just spends time with every word uh, it can seem slow at times, but yet I get rich, rich teaching from that. I listen to Andrew. I listen to, I've listened to things from Oral Roberts back from the 50s and 60s when he had these miracle crusades. Yeah. You can find this stuff on YouTube. I listen to Keith Moore. I listen to Jesse Duplantis. I listen to uh, Jerry Savelle. I listen to Bill Winston. I listen to Creflo Dollar. I listen to, there's just a whole gamut. And it's not that I necessarily agree with every single thing they have. I don't even agree with me from the... 10 years ago sometimes. Uh, so it's not, it's not about agreement, it's about impartation. What, is, what are you getting in the spirit? Amen, so. I think that's vital for everyone to understand is that you don't have to 100% line up with every single word they say. You can glean, Yes. Um, but I, I know for me personally, when I first came to Bible school and I was hearing these truths that were contrary to all the lies I had believed, I was more sensitive to that stuff. I was yeah. like, no, I can't listen to it. I can't listen to even an inkling of that. Right. So it's as you get further in the word, and now you can kind of, what is that saying? You to hit, eat the hay and spit out the sticks or something like yep. that? Yep. To where you can be like, oh yeah, that really blessed me, even though you're not 100%. Um, oh my goodness, we're down to an end of time. 
Uh, the time goes by so fast. It that does. was awesome, Barry. Well, we were having fun. So we were having fun. <laughs> My goodness, this is Amen. absolutely amazing. And if you guys are not taking advantage of these live Bible studies uh, five days a week, I would encourage you to do so. I'm telling you, it is like a discipleship uh, maker. Um, it's, it's discipling. I, I get discipled sitting here and hosting. So we want to thank you for tuning in today. Don't forget we have a live Bible study um, Monday at 10 a.m. Mountain Time. And you have a great day, Barry. You too. Thanks so much. Yes. I enjoyed it. And you guys have a great day. We'll see you next time. Bye. On December the 6th at 6 p.m. Mountain Time, uh, myself, my executive team, some guests like Jesse Duplantis are going to be with us, and we are going to be revealing the plans that God has given us for building out Karis Bible College to where it has all of the facilities that a normal university would. I think this is really going to bless you. We're going to have some architectural live programs where we zoom through the buildings. It'll be a blessing. Check it out December the 6th, 6 p.m. Mountain Time. Join us every weekday for our daily live stream on Gospel Truth TV.